Jackson Swain touchdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's time for the Swain event with your host, Jason Swain. My man. Real sports talk for the real sports fan. All you chumps are going to bow when I whoop him. It's time for the Swain event, fueled by Dead End Barbecue. Get into his mouth and a red flag. Swain Event, SwainEvent.com, fueled by Dead End Barbecue, top 100 barbecue restaurant in America. Ben McGee, Go Balls 247. Supposed to be one of the best friends that you can have. But I don't know. You, you try to go and bring him Dead End Barbecue, and he just turns you down. I. I don't know, man. We're going to have to reevaluate our current status, Ben McKee. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. See, I, I think a good friend would have recognized that the other friend, the friend that they're trying to help out and uh, take care of in the midst of chaos in their house, I think that they would have looked at the Tennessee baseball schedule and seen that uh, Tennessee plays at 7.30, on Friday night and thought, oh, four or five o'clock would be a good dinner time or uh, would have looked at the schedule on uh, Saturday and seen that the orange and white game was at one twenty. Uh, the baseball game was at five thirty. Uh, maybe we, we could do a, a, a an early lunch around 11 or so before the spring game, make sure that he's fueled up for the day of coverage of Tennessee athletics. So, or even could have looked at Sunday schedule and seeing that Tennessee had a late Sunday game, first pitch at 3 o'clock, and, and could have fit in lunch in between church and the series finale. So, uh, I mean, if if you want to talk about, if, if this is a 20 v. 1, buddy, I, I don't know that you want to, I don't, I don't know that you want to swing here, my friend. You're busy. You, you've been busy covering a lot of winning in Tennessee athletics. A lot, a lot of news, a lot of things happening. Right now, with Tennessee sports, the text box is brought to you by Betty Chevrolet, BettyChevrolet.com. Uh, it's on the free Swain event app, a way for you to interact during the show, ask questions, throw in comments, whatever you choose to do is there for, for you. I don't know what the biggest headline is today. Is Come it a starter on the football team hitting the transfer portal or? Is it a key, key piece being added to a basketball team that just went to the Elite Eight? You have to understand what day it is. It is April the 16th. We are fresh off of basketball season. It's still fresh. Right now, Tennessee football just completed their um, spring scrimmage, orange and white scrimmage. Elijah Heron, starting linebacker, um, hit the portal. Now, I've been kind of hearing some whispers, not a lot of whispers, just whispers from the right person about Elijah Heron seeing how difficult it is to compete at the SEC level. And last year was obviously a tough year for him. Florida game was tough. You know, Missouri game was tough. And saying, you know what, I probably need to go somewhere else where I can play and 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 be a factor. Not just be there, but make an impact. And if that's true, man, I I actually commend and applaud Heron for getting out in front of it, seeing, all right, well, I I'm just I'm just not as athletic as I need to be um, and, and making that move now before it's too late and saying, you know what, man, I would love to play with my brother, Caleb Heron, but I got to do what's best for me at the end of the day. I got a lot of respect if that is the scenario, but regardless, this is a starting linebacker that has decided to hit the portal and uh, being are you saying that, that that starting linebacker in football is the biggest headline today, April the 16th, over 
Dubar making his announcement that he's committing to the Volunteers. Best round being the next Dom Connect. It's a lot of pressure, but he'll be all right. He can handle it. Where are you leaning, man? Uh, he is not going to be the next Donk Connect. No, he's not. And he is not the biggest storyline in uh, the world of Tennessee athletics on this Tuesday, April 16th. Uh, although the first question we did get on the text box this morning, Chip Payne made the first great point of the day. Uh, and then the first Dang. question we got was about Tennessee's big baseball series this weekend up in Lexington from Clay. So I will point that out. Dang. But... Uh, it, it it's no doubt the uh, the news that Elijah Herring is entering the transfer portal. I, I don't think any Tennessee fan believes that this is a backbreaker of any sorts. Th- this isn't. Whoa, uh, whoa, Ben! You got to back up. You, you can't say that. You 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 think Tennessee fans believe this is a backbreaker? Bro, we had some Tennessee fans freaking out when a Waka and they do hit hit the portal, like. Freak out, freak out. So there are some fans that they see starter, they're in freak out mode. But go ahead. I have not seen that reaction. Maybe I've been looking in the wrong place. Um, I think Elijah Herring is a solid football player, and most of the comments that I saw was that, okay, well, this must mean that, A, Jeremiah T. Lander is going to be an absolute beast. B, they can get faster at that position and there won't be as many missed tackles. That's the reaction that I saw. Uh, granted, I actually went to bed early by my standards last night. So and that, was that wasn't too, too far or too long after the news broke and i uh, been getting the kiddos off to daycare this morning. So maybe I've missed some other reaction in, in that sense, but I would think that the overall thought from the fan base, for the most part, there, there are, I think with any news, right, you're going to have some some people who swing one way or the other to the extreme. But I think for the most part, the reaction is is probably going to be level headed. We have to remember that Twitter is not real life. It's not. Facebook is is not real life. Dude, the, that's another ultimate universe. Facebook. Yes, it, it is. The reaction on there isn't the reaction of the average person on, on most things, particularly with things like this uh, so I, I do think that that is the biggest news no doubt about it he's still a a starting inside linebacker for Tennessee next season so I'm, I'm sure the people who don't follow the program on a day-to-day basis the Tennessee fans who aren't diehards that follow every waking second of the program I'm sure that they're maybe a little bit surprised but they're probably, I would think maybe people can correct me on the text box or you can correct me again, but I, I would think that they're not freaking out about this this loss. I, I think there would be a freak out uh, had Arion Carter entered the portal or uh, maybe a Keenan Peely, uh, maybe even a Jeremiah Tealander after the buzz that Jeremiah generated this spring. And uh, there's a lot of positive buzz around Jeremiah Tealander, the rising sophomore. Um and he appears to have really positioned himself well as we approach the fall. I think there would been would have been a little more freak out if, if that was the name. I think there had been more freak out if it was Caleb Herring and not Elijah Herring. Um, but uh, so I, I do think that this is the biggest news of the day. But I feel like for the most part, Tennessee fans are I, I think they're bummed to see Elijah go because you you want as many bodies as as you can get, and and he wasn't a bad inside linebacker, but he certainly had a step to take this off season and there was no guarantee that he was going to take that step. Yeah. Usually we, we wait to be replaced or we wait till it's too late. Like what, what, what Elijah Heron did. That was, that was a, that was a grown up move by him. That was a very mature move by him. It really is. Now, as long as he doesn't go to Kentucky or something. Well, let me ask you this part. I'll cheer. Because I, I've, I've seen Elijah Herring left because he he wants to play. And his path to playing time right now, in his eyes, does not look great. Mm-hmm. Some of the reaction that I've seen to people sharing that news is that, well, why doesn't he stay and 
try and work to earn a starting spot? What what is your reaction? He is a starter. To that reaction. He he was a starter. He started last year. He's he he's making this decision. It seems he's being proactive and saying, Man, the fin don't lie. Like I, I gave my all. I play hard as I can. Everybody can't play at this level, the SEC level. Like this this is the a step below the NFL. This is why friends, whether they went to Tennessee or not, that played in the SEC, when they get to the NFL, and I asked them about the adjustment they had to make, it wasn't like football related. It was more about understanding the business side of it and being in a new city and being in a different locker room. It's not football related because the competition at Tennessee or Florida or Alabama or Georgia prepares you for that. So understand like it's hard to compete at this level. It's hard to get at this level. We got recruits all around the country, Ben, and you know, this recruits that everybody think they are sec quality sec caliber. They're turning down good offers for at, at good schools, at smaller conferences, because somewhere along the line, they've been told that they're SEC caliber, that they are LSU and Florida and Tennessee and Alabama and Georgia caliber. No, not everybody can go there. There's recruits right now that miss their blessings of going and getting a college a scholarship at a smaller school because they're telling those schools no, holding out for an SEC offer that never comes. It's hard to be at this level. It's hard to get to this level. And then it's hard to play at this level and play consistency consistently at this level. And it's hard to play at a high level at this level. It's, it's tough. So you're taking Elijah Heron that last year he was targeted. Man, he was he was targeted by opposing teams. But he was targeted by Florida. He was targeted by Missouri. He was targeted throughout the season. Did he play hard? Absolutely. Did he give it his all? Absolutely. Emotionally, physically, he gave it his all. But sometimes you have to understand. Maybe it's not good enough. And I commend him for saying, I don't need somebody else to tell me. I can see that. I'm watching the film. I'm a step too late because I'm overthinking things. And I'm not as quick and fast as I need to be when I do take that half a step to think or that half a second to think. So, So people who are saying, well, why do you just stay and in, in, in work and try to you know, get a spot? Well, he had a spot last year. And you know the game, Ben. Once you sign somewhere, they're looking to replace you next next year. The next year, they're looking to replace you. So let's go to the phones. 865-255-03 is our telephone number. Good morning. Morning. How you doing, guys? What's up, Turkey Man? Hey. I hope you guys have a good day. And- I sent you both a little uh, thing off YouTube. I thought you might enjoy. I enjoyed it. If you get a chance to sit down and watch it, it's uh, kind of entertaining. But uh, I, it had me going for a while. It ended up being a uh, April Fool joke, but I, it had me kind of going for a minute. Anyhow, I, I thought you guys might enjoy it. So I sent it to you. Hope you do. Uh, question: uh, What did you see uh, out of the scrimmage? that, uh, you know, made you smile in a direction, um, maybe something you hadn't seen, uh, that you uh, uh, liked. Uh, and other thing is, as you're talking about uh, players moving on, 
Uh, Gaston Moore, I feel like, could have played at some level. Uh, you know, maybe not the SEC, but I feel like he could play as quarterback some somewhere. And what keeps someone with that kind of talent He's playing in the SEC. SEC? He's playing right now in the uh, SEC, Turkey Man. Well, I just think I think he I think he could play some more. And uh, I he thought is he, playing I thought, right now. He's a, he's the backup quarterback at Tennessee. Uh, he hasn't okay, played. I think he, he, I'm saying he could start some more. I think okay. that he could he could be the he could be the individual. I think uh, he, he really. I thought he last year. I thought well, he looked pretty good. But uh, I was wondering about that. Sometimes people come and and play. And have another direction, maybe coaching, or uh, you know, another direction in in uh, life. But I just uh, I just wondered about that I mean, because I I felt like that he could have really uh, went somewhere and and been the man. I think. You base, but, are you basing that off of? Uh, this no, no, no. Last year, I, no, 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 no. Last year, I I, I seen that uh, and, glimmers of that. You know, I thought. Okay. And. Uh, and and actually, uh, there was a time or two I thought, well, maybe, maybe give me a shot, you know. But yeah, I just made. But anyhow, I hope you guys have a good one. And uh, what did you guys see at the uh, scrimmage that, uh, that maybe uh, the, fan, the fans hadn't seen you on pulling out or yeah? Something? I got you. Oh, all right, we'll see, guys. All right, Turkey Man. Right. Um, dang, Joe had Turkey Man like that. Joe. Turkey man was that tired, Joe? Joe Milton? He wanted to, he wanted to see Gaston Moore? <laughs> was it that bad for Turkey Man? Cause I didn't see any, any throws or any play from Gaston Moore last year, but I was like, you know what? Let's let's, let's give him a shot. Turkey Man must have been really fed up with Joe. <laughs> uh, I think Gaston Moore can be a starter somewhere in college football. The question is, at what level? There's a lot of football levels. There's other divisions. There's other conferences outside of the SEC. So, do I think Gaston Moore could be a starting quarterback somewhere else? Yeah. Is it the Big Ten? I doubt it. But it could be in a lower level. And Gaston Moore had that opportunity, but he chose to come here and um, be a backup. And he is one play away from, from playing Ben McKee. And uh, I want to get your take. We need to take a quick timeout. Turkey man, he said, I have seen a number of quarterback put in Gaston Moore <laughs> last year. Oh, man. 865-255-03 is our telephone number. Ben McKee, Go Vols 247. Jason Swain here with you live from the Low T Center studio. When we come back, Ben McKee, share with us your take from Turkey Man's call and what stood out to you in the orange or white scrimmage. Be right back. Swain event. You're listening to The Swain Event. You don't say. Fueled by Dead End Barbecue. Yeah! Fellas, there's a lot of people talking about testosterone, but do your homework and go to a provider that you can trust. I recommend Low T Center. It's where I get my levels checked. At Low T Center, they make it quick and easy. You walk in, take a simple blood test, and you'll get your results back in about 25 minutes. If you've been feeling tired, grumpy, have noticed weight gain, loss of muscle mass, you may have low T levels. Go to LowTCenter.com to book your appointment online. That's LowTCenter.com. Low T Center, reinventing men's health care. When you are craving some quality barbecue, there's only one place to go, Dead End Barbecue. Dead End Barbecue has been featured on ESPN's Taste of the Town, the first barbecue restaurant on the SEC Network, CBS Sports, Headline News Tailgate Show, Amazon Prime's The Restaurant Comeback, Food Paradise, and named one of the top 100 barbecue restaurants in America. The search is over. Dead End Barbecue is located on 3621 Sutherland Avenue right here in Knoxville. You can even have it delivered right to your door through Chow Now. Visit their website at deadendbbq.com. Dead End Barbecue, 
The search is over. Hey, Val Nation. This is Charlie Pratt, financial representative with Modern Woodman and MWA Financial Services. Modern Woodman has been touching lives and securing futures for 140 years. Being born and raised here in East Tennessee, I'm honored to help East Tennesseans in all phases of life with retirement planning, investments, and life insurance. A big win on Saturday starts with preparation early in the week. A secure financial future starts with planning today. Contact my office today at 865-919-6468 to review your financial plan and make sure you are on track for success. As always, go Vols. Registered representative and investment advisor, representative offering securities and advisory services through NWA Financial Services, Inc., a wholly owned subsidiary of Modern Woodman of America, member of INCRA, SIPC. Good morning, Swain Event fam. America's college sports town has everything you could want in a lifestyle. You want a cottage home in town or a downtown condo? Or maybe you're looking for a home with a pool or a lake property? Well, whatever you want, the Knoxville area has it. And I'm ready to assist when it's time to find what you're looking for. So give me a call, Jennifer Morris, 865-694-5904, or email me at jennifermorris865 at gmail.com. And check out my website at nextmovesmokymountains.com. Go Vols! Baby Chevrolet saves you money. 2.9% APR or $5,000 total value on new Silverado 1500s. New Equinox with 1.9% APR plus no payments for 90 days or 2,500 total cash allowance at Baby Chevrolet. Just because you can't call in doesn't mean that you have to sit on the sideline. Impact the show with a text box. It's part of the free Swain Event app. Great Ben McKee. Go Vols 247. I'm Jason Swain. From the Low T Center Studio. We're talking to Elijah Heron, hitting the transfer portal. Turkey Man called in and uh, wants to know what what made you smile during the orange or white game. What stood out? Also asked about Gaston Moore being a player that can be a starting quarterback somewhere else. I said before the break, probably at a lower level. I don't see ACC or SEC or Big Ten, but a smaller school, absolutely. Ben, your response to what Turkey Man had to say about Gaston Moore and Turkey Man's question about Orange or White game. I agree with uh, you in that I think Gaston Moore could be a starting quarterback uh, probably at a a lower level. And when I say lower level, I'm not even talking about like FCS or um, Conference USA. Or, but I, I think he could absolutely be a, where he came from, a very fine starting quarterback at a place like UCF, Memphis, somewhere uh, of that caliber, which is – a very respectable gig as a quarterback in my mind. Uh, now, I, I the only thing I agree disagree with with the gas the more comments back and forth between you and Turkey Man was your comment about him being here and, and playing. The the only reason he is here and at Tennessee is because of the transfer portal era that we live in. Gaston Moore is the backup quarterback because there is no transfer quarterback that Tennessee could have brought in that would have taken the job from him because nobody wants to come in and, and be behind uh, Nico. Um, so, still that, 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 but the, what I'm saying is that is the reason that Gaston Moore is the backup quarterback, not because of his ability or something that he did. But we'll see when, when Mark Linger continues to learn the offense and is more comfortable, if he's able to hold off Mark Linger, then I think that will be, I think that would be newsworthy. I think that would be significant. I, I think it would too. Now, to that point, I would I would want to know: Does that if that were to happen, is that because Jake Merklinger can't play at this level, or Gaston Moore is just better than than I think he is? I, I would want to know the answer to that question. Well, Merklinger had more offers coming out of high school than, than Gaston Moore, and mm-hmm. and so I guess I guess we'll find out. Uh, I, I do see what you're saying. I mean, would Gaston Moore be second string quarterback anywhere else in the SEC uh, outside of outside of Vanderbilt? 
I, I don't know. Well, I, I, I think yes, just because again, Where? in today's day and age of the transfer portal, you're, you're, you're very lucky if you have two quarterbacks at, at the level in which Tennessee had the past couple of seasons with him and three. Joe. And what's that? You're lucky if you have three. I would argue that you're also lucky to have two. How are you yeah, lucky I think if, you if two? I, I think if we did a deep dive, lucky? yes, in today's day and age of the transfer portal, teams are, are blessed if they have two going into a season that that they can legitimately rely on. Like I think you are very lucky if you go in to a season having the quarterback situation that Tennessee had the last three years, Hendon and Joe for two years and then Joe and Nico for a year. I think that is a, a huge blessing. I, I think if we did a, a deep dive into SEC quarterback depth charts, I think that would prove to be true. Um, may, maybe I'm wrong on that, but I just think in today's day and age of, of transfer portal era and and guys and quarterbacks not wanting to sit behind anybody, they're, they're not going anywhere where there's an obvious quarterback there. Uh, unless that quarterback is on the way out the door, uh, that that is the the only way that you're kind of racking up quarterbacks. I the way I look at it is like if this was ten years ago before the transfer portal really started popping off, Gaston Moore is third or fourth string, but because of of what college football has become and and quarterbacks bouncing around every single off season and and not wanting to sit behind a perceived QB one. Uh, Gaston Moore has put himself in position to take advantage of what college football has become at the quarterback position. And that's perfectly fine. Now, I'm not trying to put Gaston Moore down whatsoever. I was very impressed with Gaston on Saturday. I thought he showed great poise. I thought he showed great confidence. I, I thought he made some very nice throws. And, and I would have a level of confidence with Gaston in the game. Uh, now, there's there's levels to it. And I think you have to reasonably set your expectations, but there there is a level of of comfort and confidence with him being the backup. If something were to happen to Nico, because of how familiar he is with this coaching staff and this playbook, I think that that would go a very long ways. And he, it's not like he doesn't have any ability whatsoever. It's not like he's your uh, traditional walk on like some of the others in the room to where if they were thrown into a game their their ability is limited at this level I, I do think Gaston has a level of ability so I, I don't at all mean to bring this up because of to put him down or anything along those sounds lines like you're being, sounds like you're being a, a, a Gaston hater I'm totally well, no I, I I was just he, he is I was just pointing out that he is the backup quarterback because of what the transfer portal has become at that position yeah, yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna nitpick you. Um, I think um, ten years ago you would see three talented quarterbacks. The only difference between the three would be the experience. I think now you'd be lucky to have three talented quarterbacks in a room. I think pretty normal to have two right now. Um, I mean, I can look around the league, and outside of Vanderbilt, most teams, I think, in SEC have two quarterbacks that are that are talented. And the third is a is a big iffy. The third is a big iffy. Uh, I think two, the difference between now and then is you would have three or four. Now, two is probably the, the max. Um I would not be comfortable if Nico were to get hurt. Um, I would be worried as all get out. And I think it's okay for me to be worried about 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 Nico being hurt in the in the backup. Um you know, and Gaston Moore. But that's why you, you have the opportunity to go out there and make plays. Now, Turkey Man asked a question about what stood out. In the Orange or White game. I'll let you go first, Ben. Uh, quarterback play, honestly. I mean, I, I really did think that Gaston Moore and Jake Merklinger looked good on Saturday. And I, again, I, I do think you have to understand the circumstances. Uh, we, we should not be taking Saturday as gospel. 
I mean, we, we just should not. Uh, there were several guys who did not participate on both sides of the football. And what Gaston and Merklinger did, mo- most of it was against second stringers and third stringers and, and walk on. So, uh, again, I do think you have to take it with a grain of salt. But I, I did love the conviction in which they appeared to be doing things. The, they didn't appear uh, to be a, a fish out of water just in simply running the offense and, and knowing where to go with the football. And and I think that's what you want to see most in, in a spring game. Yeah, the the Gaston more deep balls were, were great, um, but it, it was the, the poise in which he showed and, and how he was orchestrating the offense that, that I cared about more in that particular setting. And, and I thought he looked confident, and I thought Jake Marklinger looked confident. Now, on his touchdown run, I don't think that's an actual touchdown run in a game. That don't count. I think he's tackled well before. Uh, I, I think he should have been blown dead in two separate situations. And even if he were um, not in a non-contact, he probably gets tackled. So, uh, but still very impressive him getting out of the the pocket and, and running around there. I thought, and, and I thought he showed a level of confidence for a early enrollee as as well. So that stood out. I, I thought the receivers looked good. Uh, Chris Brazel and uh, Mike Matthews. I, I think they're gonna be able to contribute this fall as we expected, but still nice to to see it with your own eyes. And uh, th- that was really my main takeaways offensively is that the quarterbacks and receivers looked pretty good. Obviously the, the downside to that is that the defensive backs were the ones that were, were given up the plays and the defensive back room has been uh, the subject of controversy over the last couple of years. Uh, defensively, I thought Edwin Spillman looked good running around, especially for an early enrollee and, I mean, he wasn't even Athletic. your typical early enrollee. He he did get here right after Christmas break. I mean, he got here like a month, month and a half in uh, because Lipscomb Academy didn't allow early enrollees uh, until uh, Spillman and uh, Caleb Beasley as well. But I, I thought Spillman looked good. I thought T-Lander looked good. Uh, th- those were some of the guys that stood out most on the defensive side. Obviously, I expected the defensive line, those old veterans, to kind of do what they do. But in terms of newcomers, and guys maybe taking a step from year one to year two. I, I liked what I saw from Spillman and T Lander on the defensive side. Ben Mucky. Did you, sir, notice how the balls found their way in between the hash marks on some throws? I I did. Did you see a lot of that in the last couple of years here? No. I feel like I need to put things in perspective here. Please. I think it really speaks to how great Alex Golish, Josh Heupel really are. Y'all. We really didn't throw the ball in the middle of the football field in the first couple of years. I remember when um, Hendon went in versus Pittsburgh. When Joe got hurt, Hendon threw a pick. Didn't see the backside safety. It was, a throw, it was a throw in the middle of the football field. And then from there, Hendon just did not throw interceptions. So the reason why is because we played to Hendon's strengths. We kept the ball out of the middle for the most part. To be confined to two-thirds of the field, you split the field into thirds. The outer third is where – Tennessee, for the last three years, have been lethal. Last year, not so much lethal. But imagine only throwing the ball outside the the hash and still having the offenses that you had the first two years. That's insane to me. I remember playing. And we would always have someone attacking the middle. 
we would have a post dig concept. We call it Meyer. Never forget it. One side there will be a dig, other side it will be a post. We will have a concept called dagger, which we would have two digs, one shallow, one intermediate, one around five to eight yards, other one around 15 yards. Be dagger. And we'll tag the backside with either a post or a corner or whatever. It could be something independent. But we always had people going in the middle of the football field. And it's hard to cover because it's the quickest throw. How many times have we been watching the game? Or you've been watching the game while watching Twitter. And it's third down and 14. And they pick up a first down throwing a damn slant pass. Or throwing a, a, a dig. You're like, well, we can't cover that. It happens so much that people still make the corny joke that Henry Toll Toll can't cover slants. When linebackers don't guard slants, that's not their responsibility. They not they don't guard them. They're just in the middle, and the slants are thrown, beating the DB. The DB couldn't guard the slant. It's the easiest throw. It's the shortest throw. On the goal line, DBs are told, whatever you do, don't give up the slant. Play hard side, play hard inside technique. Do not give up the slant. Because it's the easiest, quickest throw. But if you're not good at doing it, you're not going to do it. And for Josh Hype and Alex Golish to have the success that they've had in the first two years without throwing a ball in the middle of the football field as much as everyone else, dude, that's, that's remarkable. But Saturday, I'm standing there, and I'm like, yo, that was a throw. That was a pass in the middle to Keatsman. I didn't think he was going to be a pass catcher. Wait a minute. There's another throw in the middle of the football field. And another one. Yo, this is different. This is real different. And then I was like, oh, yeah. Well, the quarterbacks are different. Maybe these quarterbacks are better at doing that than the other quarterbacks. That doesn't mean that Nico will have a better year than Hendon's last year. It doesn't mean that at all. It's just that different players have different strengths and weaknesses. That's all that means. And as a coach, you have to play to your player's strengths. But I don't know what Nico's weakness is. Because <laughs> um, that dude can make every throw. It seems like it. <laughs> that, dude, I mean, that boy can make every throw. He's mobile. That boy, good. That, boy, that boy good. He can make every throw. He's mobile. He's chill. He's a he's a good leader. Like I, I, I ain't found a weakness yet, Nico. <laughs> I ain't found one. I ain't been looking too hard either, but I ain't found one. And you can say, well, he took some sucks in the in the you know in the bowl game. Well, it'd be great if he had some blocking. <laughs> and and he's young. That that's to be expected. Yeah, like. I'm sure Woo. he'll take a sack or two this season that he probably shouldn't have because he's young and inexperienced. Yeah. But, man, that's one thing I noticed, Turkey, man, was, huh, because even, like, Hubs, I was thinking it, and Hubs mentioned it during the broadcast. Uh, we were both on the sideline. The game was so big, you had to have two sideline reporters, apparently. Um, Doesn't get any bigger than Brent Hubs and Jason Swain talking football together. I guess. But... I was thinking, and Hub said it. I was like, yo, this, yo, these passes sure hitting in the middle of the football field. Sure in between these, these hash marks. And that's good for the tight ends. And it sucked for the tight ends in the last couple of years because that's that's their area. That's what, that's where they can get balls. So for Ethan Davis and Holden Stays, who is a grown man. He's a grown man. And uh, even keeps him in, man. Tidy is my opportunity to make some make some money. Now, what else stood out was Mike Matthews and Brazel. And Mike Matthews more so than Brazel. Because Matthews had a go route. Young receivers tend to fade to the sideline before the ball comes too early. Because they're watching for the ball, right? Yeah, they fade too early. They're not able to hold the line. So if you have an imaginary line between the numbers in the sideline, it's about 
five or six yards. A lot of practice fields will put a red line on the practice field to help the receivers and quarterbacks. And the aiming point for quarterbacks is in between the red line and the sideline. And for the receivers, you want to stay on that red line. If you don't stay on that red line and you fade too much to the sideline, you're not giving the quarterback enough room to throw the ball over your shoulder. And this is what happens. The ball thrown is thrown out of bounds because the quarterback is trying to throw the ball on the outside shoulder, but the receivers continuing to fade to the sideline. And then fans rip the quarterback. Oh, my God, he threw it out of bounds. It was an inaccurate throw. Well, the route sucked. It sucked donkey ass. That's that's why the ball went out of bounds. It was terrible. It was terrible. That's why. Stop blaming the quarterback. Blame the receiver. He didn't do his job. What Mike Matthews did, yo, that was that was that was pro stuff. That was like Chad Ocho Cinco, Steve Smith. That was pro veteran stuff. He beat the man so bad, but had the wherewithal to still save himself room to allow the quarterback to throw the ball on his outside shoulder, giving him more room. He actually lost a little bit of ground and gave the quarterback more room on the outside. And then the ball was thrown outside shoulder. Mike Matthews had to fade out. Instead of running straight and being able to run through the catch, he had to kind of fade out and catch the ball like over his over his head a little bit. And that's a hard catch to make because you have to like follow the ball with your eyes and it's like a blind spot. But he caught it, Ben. And when he caught it, he never slowed down. He accelerated. The DB never could catch up with him. Now, one would say, who's a DB? DB slow. What's wrong with the DB? One could also say, that's a five-star receiver. That's just special what he did. Think about it. One dude is just running as fast as he can, trying to follow the other guy, trying to chase the other guy. The other guy is running and trying to catch the ball and, and focusing on the ball and fading. One guy's not running full speed. The other guy's running full speed. That's the DB. The DB never had a chance to catch him, Ben, because as soon as he caught it, choom, he turned on the Jets like uh, overdrive and scored a touchdown. Yo, we don't have a lot of dudes on the roster that can do that. I don't think we have a dude besides like Squirrel White and maybe a, one or two other dudes that can do it. Maybe Squirrel White and one other guy. But we don't have a lot of guys. That was impressive. Chris Brazel, he's just long, man. He was just eating up stripes. Catching it and just score a touchdown. It was impressive. But it wasn't impressive as, as Mike Williams, Mike, Mike Matthews touchdown. <sighs> and what I loved most about Mike Matthews wasn't any pass that he caught. It was the block that he had on the perimeter on the Dayton Sneed touchdown where – he just took the DB and just bodied him into the end zone. I I, I love seeing that as much, much as anything. I know the receivers, we want them catching passes and whatnot, but I, I thought that there was, with Cedric Tillman moving on last season, Brew McCoy going down, uh, it, although Brew McCoy did go down more midway through the year, um, but I, I thought Tennessee missed an element of blocking on the perimeter uh, that it had the previous year, last year. And Mike Matthews is not afraid to stick his face in the fan. And uh, I, I feel like that was something the receiver room was missing a season ago. So to see a, a youngster not be afraid to get out there and, and block on the perimeter and, and do it in the manner that he was able to, I I, I was as impressed with uh, that as I was with him actually catching passes. Now, obviously, I, I don't know the intricacies of running routes and, and playing the position the way that you do. Uh, so what you just described does sound more impressive than than his block, but I I, I loved watching that block that he had on the Dayton Sneed touchdown as well. Honestly, Ben, his block is more impressive than, than the touchdown because his block points more to his mentality. When we see freshman receivers come in to college, we don't see them wearing wearing number eighty nine as a five star. 
he played like Steve Smith Saturday. That speaks to his mentality. I saw him getting into it with somebody on, on the sideline. It was before that. It was on that drive, but it was before that touchdown. And I was on the offensive side sideline. Uh, I didn't go to the defensive sideline until I interviewed Keenan Peely in game. Um, I'm stunned that you didn't go to the defensive side for a while. Um, because I'm used to being on that sideline because of the games. Mm-hmm. I'm just used to it. Um, and the offensive side is closer to the tunnel anyways. But anyways, um, so I saw him like kind of getting into it. I was like, oh, yeah, I like this. Okay, we're going we to get some action. We're going to get some action in the Orange and White game. I like it. But then... He finished that drive with a with a block that uh who who scored touchdown again? What's his name? Dayton Sneed. Dayton Sneed. What's say it again? Dayton Sneed. Man, he was fired up. He was fired up, man. He had a couple he was. He's a, a walk on that gets to get into the, the yeah. checkerboard. Yeah, he, he had a couple good plays, man. He was fired up. I I thought he was on Knock Kelsey Pope down, man. He was jacked. He was hyped after he scored that touchdown. That's what you love to see, man. You love to see that. Attaboy, though, Dayton Sneed, man. Local. That is what you love about yeah, the, the spring game. I know the spring game can can be a little meh for for a good chunk of us, but that 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 is the the great thing about the spring game is is guys like Dayton Sneed who don't get to play on Saturdays in the fall, really getting to get in and, and score touchdowns. Yeah, man. Yeah, that was cool. That was real cool. <sighs> man, I need you to talk to me about what's going on with this baseball series this weekend. We got a heavyweight bout on our hands, buddy. And then are uh, we going to get some more basketball transfer? Are we going to get some more, Ben? Ben McKee, Go Vols 247, will let us know when we come back from break. Swain Event, fueled by Dead End Barbecue. You're listening to The Swain Event. And you know this, man. Here in Knoxville, we love it when a squirrel's in the checkerboards. But when there's a squirrel in our attic... That's all sides. When that happens, call Alpha Wildlife. They're Knoxville's veteran-owned and operated wildlife removal company. When unwanted critters put their feet up on your coffee table, call 865-224-6555. Let the Tennessee fans at Alpha Wildlife evict those unwanted tenants and set your home up with a winning defense to keep that wildlife where it belongs. That's Alpha Wildlife at 865-224-6555. They have locations in Nashville, Memphis, Chattanooga, and in parts of South Carolina. Check them out online at alphawildlife.com. Fellas, there's a lot of people talking about testosterone, but do your homework and go to a provider that you can trust. I recommend Low T Center. It's where I get my levels checked. At Low T Center, they make it quick and easy. You walk in, take a simple blood test, and you'll get your results back in about 25 minutes. If you've been feeling tired, grumpy, have noticed weight gain, loss of muscle mass, you may have low T levels. Go to LowTCenter.com to book your appointment online. That's LowTCenter.com. Low T Center, reinventing men's health care. Baby Chevrolet saves you money. 2.9% APR or $5,000 total value on new Silverado 1500s. New Equinox with 1.9% APR plus no payments for 90 days or 2,500 total cash allowance at Baby Chevrolet. What's up, Swain Event crew? Always happy to be with my friends in the morning. So, everybody has a next chapter in life, right? And sometimes that includes a move. Your next page may have a growing family, or maybe an empty nest, or possibly a move back home. When the time comes, I'll be here to help. Just give me a call. Jennifer Morris, Keller Williams Realty, 865-694-5904. And check out my website, nextmovesmokymountains.com. As always, go Vols! Looking for a different way to enjoy the show? Yes! Then check out Swain Event TV on YouTube. It's hard to keep up with all this winning that's going on on Rocky Top. It's really hard. It's really hard to keep up with. So much winning. Softball team. Winning series. Baseball team. 
out here sweeping the defending national champion. I know Paul Skeens ain't on the team. I don't care. You look at basketball, what they doing. They just reloading. That's all they doing. They just reloading. Lady of all basketball team. Caldwell making some moves with her style. It's time to recruit. It's time. A lot of winning going on, Ben. It's hard to keep up with, which is why I didn't have a chance to get you that daddy in barbecue. <laughs> Heavyweight series this weekend. A lot of people circled the LSU Tennessee series, but the Kentucky Tennessee series will be even bigger. When you look at both teams being ranked in the top 10, the top, what, the top five or top four or five teams in the country are right here in the SEC. What are we going to see this weekend, Ben? Yeah, the top four teams in the country are from the SEC. Uh, you've got Texas A&M, who jumped to number one uh, because Alabama knocked off Arkansas, who was not number one uh, this past weekend. Uh, and then Kentucky is is three and Tennessee is is four. Uh, Arkansas dropped one spot to two. So you got A and M, Arkansas, Kentucky, and Tennessee is the top four teams in the country. And before the season started, I did not think that uh, by the time Tennessee had to go to Lexington on the schedule that it would be a number three versus number four matchup. I I knew that Kentucky would be pretty decent, but I didn't think they'd be number three in the country. Uh, type of good so it, it, it's it's going to be a really really big series uh, I would say that outside of uh, Arkansas and Texas A&M Kentucky has been the best team in the SEC this season the third best team in in the SEC so far this season and uh, they're still playing their their small ball style of of play um, oh, yeah. but I do think that they've become more dynamic on the offensive end and on the mound uh, offensively uh, they're not hitting home runs like Georgia or Tennessee is, uh, but they are hitting more home runs. They they do have more versatility offensively than they've shown the last couple of years. And then pitching, their their pitching has just taken off this season. Uh, in conference play, uh, through five weeks of, of SEC play, they have the second-best ERA, uh, the lowest opponent batting average in the SEC, They've allowed the fewest amount of hits, the second fewest amount of runs. Uh, now they are 13th in strikeouts, and they are sixth in walks. Um, but that tells me that they pitch the contact and play good defense behind the pitcher. So uh, it, it's going to be a tough series on the road. Lexington tends to not treat Tennessee all that well. Uh, two years ago, that fantastic 2022 team went up there and, and lost its only series of the season. So it'll it'll be a tough challenge. I I believe the weather forecast is not looking great either. It's supposed to be cold, of course, in Lexington. So it'll be a tough series, and and if Tennessee can walk out of Lexington with a series win, it would it would be very very impressive because Kentucky continues to impress week in and week out. A lot of pressure on the baseball team. A lot of pressure on Tennessee baseball team and Kentucky. They they trying to find a team that can that can be better than Tennessee. They can't find one. They cannot find one, Ben. They've been struggling, Ben. They're trying to find a team better than Tennessee. They beat Tennessee at home in the regular season. Tennessee goes on, wins the conference championship in the regular season. But Kentucky beats us. Spoil our senior day. A lot of momentum going into the tournament. People still picking Kentucky. Oh, I think they're gonna get to the final four. The offense. Da, 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 da. Lose to Oakland. They run the coach out of town. They bring in Mark Pope. Everyone excited. Got a sellout for the press conference. Really cool scene. I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to even hate. It was cool. Really, really cool. Only a few places in America can do that. Kentucky's one of those places in basketball. Still not better in Tennessee, though, this past year. Football team. Oh, you should have saw the videos. Boy, you should have saw the videos. Of, who's that quarterback? The kid that transferred? That came in? For Kentucky? Yeah. What's, what was his name this past year? Brock Vandegrift? No, the other one. This is after Will Levis. You know, they, they thrive off oh, transfer uh, quarterbacks. Leary? Yeah, boy. You, you remember those videos during the summer? Those 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 
those practice videos, fall camp, summer, they had Devin O'Leary throwing the ball to Key and Barry on Brown and Kentucky fans and people who do podcasts was, oh, yeah, this is it. They're going to be dropping bombs on Tennessee this year. Get ready, boys. Get ready. It's coming. And he did drop bombs on Tennessee. He had his best game of the season versus Tennessee. He was balling out. But just wasn't enough. Because guess what? Joe Milton had one of his best games of the year. He was balling. We were balling. Dylan Sampson went out of Camaro mode on him. So a lot of pressure on the baseball team, Ben. Because Kentucky, they're looking at the baseball team saying, y'all, y'all got to beat Tennessee in something. <laughs> got to beat them in something. Because we can't beat them in nothing else. All the pressure's on you guys. Hope the baseball team know that. A lot of riding on this series, Ben. Do they know that, Ben? Do they know about uh, this pressure? I, I, I'm sure that they are aware that this is a very important series for a lot of reasons. All right. I just need to make sure that they know. Now, I'm going to be at the baseball game today. I'll let them know, Ben, if you don't. <laughs> I'll let you let them know. I'll let them know. I don't know if I have a chance to, to do that because, you know, I'm going to be on porch well and you also know that uh tony vitello does not get along with the many sec opposing head coaches there's like one or two that that he is cordial (laughs) with uh and uh i I don't believe nick mingione at kentucky is on that list so love it love it kentucky is a school that tony enjoys beating perfect i need to tell blake burke that Christian Moore said he's going to be the home run king. And I need to tell Christian Moore that Blake Burke said he's going to be the home run king. I like the back and forth. I like the healthy competition between those two. It only helps the team, man. I need some home runs today. I need some home well, runs today. I'm, I'm sure that you will get them. They are that's why I'm going. playing Bellerman today. Mm-hmm. I, need, I need to bring a glove. Where, do you know where Bellarmine is located? Uh, you know, it's around around the corner up there, around there, down there. It's actually around the corner from Lexington. They're over in Louisville. Yeah, and, you know, uh, over there by, by the line. They are the six line. and twenty nine. You know, it's down there by the state line. Around there, up there. What's that record? Six and twenty-nine. Do I need to bring me a glove or just like a hat? Get there and catch the ball just to, with the hat, or do I need to go get a glove? Where are you sitting? Uh, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be uh, porch. Mm, I would take take you a glove or, or take your White Sox hat if you haven't lost it, <laughs> and uh, if, you, if you see the ball coming your way, just whip it off and snag it. Oh, I got my Grissom baseball hat here. That that I gave you that you probably have not worn once. I haven't worn it once. That's okay. My my buddy who is the head coach for them is no longer coaching there, so it's all good. You, you can do what you need to do with that. Yeah, we 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 ran him out of town because he wasn't winning enough, I guess. Well, the the following coach is not won as much as him, so I'm just telling myself that I got a signed Jerry Rice and Tim Brown hat right here. I don't know what to do with it. It's been kind of sitting here. Um, yeah, yeah. The- Find something because I'm taking the kids with me, so I'm trying to catch a home run and give it to them. Well, I'm I'm sure your youngest will bare hand the baseball will, and, and catch try. it herself. So <laughs> she, she will try. Hey, yo. She she will try to. She will try. Uh huh. Are you sitting? What which? Do you know which level of the porch you're sitting at? I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Because you, if if you're you sitting me? in the front, if you're sitting in the first porch. Uh, you better watch out when uh, Billy Amick and Christian Moore and Blake Burke are hitting because they 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 could hit a screamer right into you. They they could hit a pitch you know whistle. What? I know where I am. Right at you. I know where I am. Yeah, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be close. You better pay attention. Yeah, I'm gonna be I'm on, I'm I'm on that first level. So you better be uh, aware because Kavar's tears. He's a lefty Dylan though. Right? He's a lefty though. So I ain't, he might I mean he yeah. might go opposite direction, but I'm right there. In the front, uh, which is prime real estate for uh, right right handed hitter. I hope one. I hope one gets hit right to you. 
Brian Hunsucker says, Swain, grown men do not take gloves to a ball game, especially guys who play receiver in the SEC. Um, good point. I will say that a baseball is a lot different than catching a football. Like, have you seen any receivers or tight ends play in any games recently without gloves? So if we're wearing gloves to catch a football, don't you think we need to wear something to catch a baseball that has been what Ben would say, pissed on, pissed missile? <laughs> I I would I would argue that uh if you're sitting in the front row of the outfield and there's a potential uh for the nation's leading home run hitting team to to hit some piss missiles directly at you, then a, a glove is appropriate whether you're a kid or a grown man. I need one of those uh, umpire bass. That that could that could benefit you pretty I well. A, I got a low T center helmet. Maybe I can wear that. Cause, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be occupied. I'm gonna be probably tending to the kids. Hey, don't do that. Don't say that. Get back Which over here. Don't. The do baseball's that. gonna get hit right at you when you're not mm, paying attention. Yep. Yep. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be daddying. So I gotta keep my head on the swivel. Chipane says, Swain, going to come back from the game with the black eye from mishandling the ball, being hit to him. You're probably right. It won't be the first time. Neil Mafia says, this grown man takes a glove to a baseball game because this grown man played college football for nine years, and that S hurts. That's right, Neil Mafia. That's right. Uh, Dustin Vall, 71, says, did Tennessee basketball have any success with the other wing player that was in this weekend. Talking about Tyson, uh, that battle with North Carolina looks like it's going to be fierce. So, all right, Ben, give us some give us some news. We saw where Dubar made it officially known. He is uh, coming to Tennessee. Uh, I saw the, the video with him wearing number five. Um, I text Chris Lofton. I said, um, so who's going to tell him? Well, not only is who's, who's going to tell, tell him, but there, there's <laughs> currently somebody on the team that wears number five. Said, Who, who's going to tell him, man? Because, like, there ain't no way he wear number five. Dude, you can wear four, zero. You can wear any number you want besides the ones that are already retired. But five <laughs> is the last number he going to wear because the guy Ziggler got that one, and when he's done, that number is done. I ain't got no sense, man. I ain't got no sense. As soon as I saw the commitment, the first thing I did was tweet, yeah. And then the second thing I did was send it to Chris Slofton. I was like, uh, so who's going to tell him? <laughs> that was my first thought as well. Uh, now, I honestly, I forgot that. I forgot the Chris Lofton part. My initial thought was, uh, that's the guy's jersey, sir. You what? Well, I mean, I thought about it for a brief second. I didn't think about it in depth. I just, I saw the number five and I immediately thought, hey, that's Zakai's jersey. Why, why are you wearing Zakai's jersey? You're not going to be wearing that next year. You're the biggest Chris Lofton fan ever. I thought you was going to name your son Lofton. I, I considered it. I, I think I'm saving Lofton for the next dog that uh that we get. I'm sure Chris is flattered. I, I'm, he should be. Uh, Cade Tyson, not Mike Tyson, but Cade Tyson from Belmont, who uh, Mr. Dubar... Darlin Stone Dubar is a heck of a shooter. Swain, did you see his uh, three-point numbers the past two years? Yeah, 40%. Yes. But not only he shot 40.4% two seasons ago, this past season he technically shot 39.9%, but Swain and I like to round up because, you know, uh, 0. 0.9 is greater than 0. 0.5. That's and if it's 0. 0.5 or higher, you round up. That's what we learned in Huntsville City School System. Well, you, Madison County school system, but me, Huntsville, you know, Grissom. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not lumping all y'all bum educational schools in with Grissom. Grissom stands on its own. What we learn at Grissom <laughs> is that we round up. But with Mr. Dubar, he shot forty percent from three on a hundred and eighty-three three-point attempts last season. You know how difficult that is. Um, you know how great that is. Maybe I should say uh, another way to put it. You know how good of a shooter you have to be yeah. 
to shoot 40% on 183 three-point attempts. Yeah. And what's weird, Swain, I don't know if you've been able to check out any of his his highlights, but like his his shooting motion isn't all that fluid. Like it's it, it kind of a little unorthodox and has a, a little bit of a hitch in it, and it still goes in. Hey, uh, there's a gentleman who plays for the Indiana Pacers. Halliburton, Halliburton. Halliburton. Um, he he makes a lot of shots. His shot doesn't look like everybody else's. Uh, Shay Gilders Alexander. His shot doesn't look like everybody else's. That boy is the MVP this year. So if it goes in, it goes in. If you can get it off, and it goes in, hey, it is what it is. Correct. So I I I was. I was taken aback when I saw that he took 183 threes this past season and made 40% of them. And he's not just a three-point shooter. I, I was actually very impressed, and I, I think he's very versatile uh, position-wise, but also in terms of his offensive game. Uh, reminded me of Josiah Jordan-James, honestly, and I think he's a much better offensive player than Josiah, but Josiah could knock down open threes. Uh, Josiah could get to the mid-range pull-up or um, be one-on-one in the mid-range and and get into a post move and and go up for a jumper. Uh, Josiah could also get on the block and and get into a post move and and get something around the basket. And that's what I saw with watching some of Dubar's highlights from last season is I saw him catch one on the block and go into the post move and make a a fadeaway jump shot. I saw him get to the mid-range and and pull up and, and knock down shots. He's obviously a, a terrific three-point shooter. Uh, he can attack the basket on line drives and, and get to the rim and, and, and finish at the rim. Uh, so I'm, I'm not saying that uh, Josiah is as skilled offensively as Dubar or is as good offensively as Dubar, but I noticed that Dubar does a lot of the stuff that Josiah does. And Tennessee wanted – Tennessee wanted to go get a Josiah in the portal and mostly from the positional standpoint of being able to play the three or, or the four and Dubar is able to do that at, at six foot eight. But I did notice kind of the different shots that he takes reminds me a lot of the different types of shots that Josiah took uh, at, at times as well. I hope that makes sense, uh, makes sense for people. It makes sense. I, I think he will be an upgrade offensively. I think Josiah defensively. Um, I think it'll be a little bit of a downgrade defensively. That's what I'm expecting. I don't mind being surprised. Yeah, no, I, I think, I mean, that's the expectation that fans should have. Uh, and I, I would, I think, I think Dubar is going to be fine defensively. I mean, he's 6'8", he's got a ton of length. He's a big physical guy. Uh, and you know he's only going to get stronger when spending the offseason with Tennessee basketball and Garrett Medinwald in the in the weight room. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think he's going to be a really good defensive player. Um, he, he was a good defensive player in, in his league last season at Hofstra uh, and, again, has the length. And, and you see a lot of highlights of his to where he uses that length to get deflections and almost read the offense uh, like a defensive back and, and pick off a pass and turn it into a, a dunk in transition. You saw a lot of that last season at Hofstra. So I think he's going to be a good defensive player. But to your point, although he can play the positions that Josiah did – Josiah was in this system for five years and knew right. the ins and outs like the back of his hand and was right. essentially a coach on the floor. And Dubar is going to have one season in the system. The IQ is just not going to be the same because Josiah spent more time with Rick. But I do yeah. think that Dubar will still be able to make some plays defensively. In terms of Tyson, I know that was the original question that was asked and apologize that we talked about Dubar before that. But I, I think Tennessee's got a, a puncher's chance there. I, I think they certainly have a chance. I, I think it may be an expensive chance, uh, and, and it, it may take being expensive uh, to get him. Just We talked about it on Thursday, I believe. Uh, he has strong ties to the state of North Carolina, uh, play AAU ball for Team Curry there in the Charlotte area. Uh, his dad is a high school coach in the Charlotte area. Uh, and North Carolina basketball, we know what that, that brand is. Uh, they don't have a ton of shooting, from my understanding, and Kay Tyson can shoot it. So I think that North Carolina is going to be desperate on top of already being tough to beat. Um, but I do think that Tennessee has a legitimate chance in that one. I think his visit uh, went well uh, from a couple of people that I have spoken to. 
I have not been able to speak to Kate Tyson, unfortunately. Uh, he sees my phone number and says, no, I'm not answering that guy's that guy's phone call. Uh, so I wasn't able to speak to him uh, following his visit. But it, I, it did seem like it, it went well. And I, I think that, um, again, not that it's all NIL, but I, I do think that that one would be a, a pricey get for Tennessee. And I, I don't know what you've heard in the NIL side you. of things with Tennessee basketball, Swain, but I, I do think that it's a good sign for – its pursuit of other players that Tennessee was able to land Dubar because I don't know that that one was cheap either. First, you need to call him from my 704 number. You got to trick him, make him think it's one of his friends from Charlotte. Second, Belmont probably went out of their way to take care of him NIL wise. Like they did as much as they could do from what I understand. And so the number that I'm hearing from what Belmont paid, it's going to take six figures to get him anywhere. North Carolina, because they're a basketball school, they are willing to pay big numbers for a basketball player in the portal because that's their bread and butter. So when I saw Balo hit the portal, I got excited. My emotions probably overtook my, my brain a little bit because I just saw a guy that could be an upgrade in the middle from a physicality standpoint. And I didn't stop to think that this dude, Balo, is leaving a borderline blue bus school that takes basketball more serious than any of those sports on campus. So if he's leaving that place for NIL, because it ain't playing time, we know that. They might be a little salty they ain't throwing the ball. They sure didn't throw throw him the ball versus Clemson. But, like, if he's leaving for NIL from Arizona, you know that price tag is big. That would be like, Nico saying, "You know what, man? I'm good. I'm going. I'm. I'm gonna hit the portal because I'm not getting paid enough. Like a football school losing a player because of NIL. That that's significant. Now, I was gonna use Juice Wells as an example. I don't know what the hell South Carolina is. I don't know if they're a football school or. or, or I don't know. I don't know." I just know they pay him a lot of money. They're, they're a women's basketball school at the moment. Yeah, I know. But I, I was going to use him as an example. But they did play play Juice Wells a lot of money, and he hit the portal. Nothing outside of NIL. And um, so I, I had I had to apologize for my excitement with Balo because we ain't getting Balo, okay? That ain't happening. I did see where... Maybe North Carolina has reached out to uh, Jonas Adu. That would be cool for him. Treat what are your thoughts on uh, when we spoke on Thursday, Jonas had or had not entered the portal? Had not, but we insinuated and threw some nuggets. Threw some, yes, yeah, that's we, right. We, we kind of let the people know that it was that was coming. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I, I got word Wednesday night and knew that he was – announcing that he was leaving on Thursday, and I believe it was at noon uh, when that news dropped. What I'm trying to remember... You got that brain. Well, and I've lost all concept of time. (laughs) Unfortunately, uh, basketball season does not end the day that Tennessee loses to Purdue. Uh, Basketball season has not ended because of what the transfer portal is and and free agency uh, that they are participating in at the moment. Uh, so that on top of baseball but you, and spring football wrapping up. But you still think Elijah Heron is the biggest story? Yes. For Tennessee fans, yes. Yeah, I almost caught you, Ben. Well, I didn't say otherwise. I'm just saying. I almost caught you because you said basketball season didn't end. So it technically didn't. it's in season. It didn't. But for me, I, I'm not the the football beat writer at GoVols247.com. Oh, okay, that, that, that's, you. You that's, that, that's Patrick Brown. So – for for Patrick doesn't have to keep up with basketball portal 
news and, and roster attrition the way that I do, uh, just like with the portal opening today, uh, Patrick's going to be well aware of, of everything happening in the football portal and in and, and the comings and goings. And, and I will obviously, everybody chips in because football is football, uh, but basketball is, and baseball is, is kind of my baby and the one that, that I have to deal with. And so the season does not end when the final game comes to an end uh, because of what uh, goes down with roster construction in college athletics nowadays. Uh, so, my point is I've lost all concept of time because the portal and spring coming to an end and baseball doing what baseball does under Tony Vitello. It's uh it, it's busy. And Oh, I have a newborn at home that does not want to sleep consistently, which has been a lot of fun. And uh, my oldest is, is reaching the terrible two phase. Uh, one minute he's happy as can be the next minute. He's just sour about something. We call him a sour patch kid because you don't know what you're going to get from him from one minute to the next. Yeah. So that's been <laughs> been a lot of fun. But that's some good news. Um, I, what, I'm, what I was misremembering is since we spoke on Thursday, there has been a development with Tobey Awaka, and that is that Tennessee is talking with Tobey about possibly returning um, because I believe as we spoke about last week, Tobey entered the portal uh, in search of more minutes because he saw – kind of like with Elijah Herring, he saw somebody else in front of him that was going to get more minutes, and that being Jonas, well, then Jonas decides to enter the portal, and that may have changed Tobey's thinking on on, on leaving. So uh, Tennessee has had talks uh, with, with Tobey uh, about possibly uh, returning. We'll, we'll see if anything uh, comes of that. There, there are others uh, that Tennessee has spoken to uh, in the portal in terms of post players, because I think we can both agree that Tennessee certainly needs uh, a post player at, at this point. Uh, they are bringing in Igor. Let's see if I can say this correct, Swain. Igor Milicic Jr., uh, a, a, a forward from Charlotte, a 6'10 forward from Charlotte. He's supposed to begin an, an official visit uh, today. Now, I was curious to see if that one would actually happen. Uh, because it, it sounded like Igor and Mr. Dubar's game are similar, although there's a height difference there in, in terms of possibly being a, a wing type. Uh, so I was I was curious to see if if he would still visit. Sounds like that is still the case. So Tennessee is hosting a, a forward from Charlotte for a visit like, beginning that, today. Igor Milicic Jr. How was the how was their game similar? Dude's like six uh, ten. Just I I guess he maybe uh, he's not like a balo like he an does. imposing he big shoot. man. He, he's he can shoot it. I I think he's more of a a space to floor for some somebody who can can play on the wing and, and also uh, maybe handle the basketball a, a little bit more than you would expect from a a six ten forward. Can I stop you? Yes, of course. It's your show. No, but it's, you know it's rude to interrupt. But I, I I made this point Thursday. I like Tobey. I like how he plays. But Igor is what Tobey, what you want in Tobey. A guy that can stretch the floor at four, shoot it, but still provide rebounding when, it, when it's time to hit the boards. I mean, this past year, he averaged almost nine rebounds per game. Shot 82% from the free throw line. Shot eight, 37, excuse me, 38% from three. So you couldn't play Tobey and Jonas on the floor at the same time a lot because Tobey was a center. Well, Jonas is a center. But with Igor, you can play him at the four at 6'10 because he's going to shoot it well. And you can play Estrella. Or if Tobey comes back, maybe you play Tobey at the center. But, yo, man, this 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 dude, Igor, man, we we get him. Woo. We, we going to be we gonna be potent on offense, and we're not even done yet. They've got five scholarships to play with currently Ooh. after Dubar. Ooh. 
committed yesterday because you're losing seven scholarship players with Dalton, Santi, Josiah, eligibility ran up, and then the four transfers currently with Tobe, Jonas, DJ Jefferson, and Freddie, uh, who visited NC State, uh, who is visiting NC State this weekend. That that would be a nice landing spot for Freddie. Uh, he can go play with Brandon Huntley Hatfield over there in Raleigh and be close to, to home. Uh, so you have those seven currently leaving, and then you're adding Bishop Boswell, the lone high school signee right now, uh, and then Dubar's commitment. So last time I checked, seven minus two is five. Uh, uh, so there, there's five scholarships left to play with. Now, I will say, I don't expect Tennessee to to, to use every single one of those five scholarships because if if you bring in 13 guys who are capable of playing at the same time that's 13 guys that you have to keep happy and that is that's a hard task in today's in today's day and age of college athletics and, and then you worry about this guy being not so great for the locker room so i'm not saying that they're going to leave a scholarship open although with basketball that 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 is a smart thing to do at times because basketball calendar is weird in terms of adding players but I, I wonder if that last scholarship or maybe even two is more of a developmental guy who isn't expecting to play right away because then you don't have to worry about keeping that player happy while all these other players are playing and you're going to have several veterans so that's something to to keep an eye on i get it i get it 865 255 when we come back going to the baby chevrolet text box nelson's over here Saying bad things about us because we ain't talking enough football. So come back and wrap up Tennessee football coming up here on the Swain event. What's up, Swain Event family? It's great to be on board. This is Taylor Hawkins with Modern Woodman Fraternal Financial, and I have one question for you. When was the last time you have slowed down and evaluated your financial situation? Just like the Vols, a great game plan leads to victory. Let us help you achieve your financial goals with a custom-made game plan. No matter what stage of life you're in, protecting your family and hard-earned money is important. So let one of our local and trusted financial professionals secure your future by visiting one of our 10 branch offices across Tennessee or give us a call locally at 865-312-5638. And remember, go Vols. Registered representative and investment advisor representative offering securities and advisory services through NWA Financial Services, Inc., a wholly owned subsidiary of Modern Woodman of America, member of INCRA, SIPC. Here in Knoxville, we love it when a squirrel's in the checkerboards. But when there's a squirrel in our attic, that's all sides. When that happens, call Alpha Wildlife. They're Knoxville's veteran-owned and operated wildlife removal company. When unwanted critters put their feet up on your coffee table, call 865-224-6555. Let the Tennessee fans at Alpha Wildlife evict those unwanted tenants and set your home up with a winning defense to keep that wildlife where it belongs. That's Alpha Wildlife at 865-224-6555. They have locations in Nashville, Memphis, Chattanooga, and in parts of South Carolina. Check them out online at alphawildlife.com. When you are craving some quality barbecue, there's only one place to go, Dead End Barbecue. Dead End Barbecue has been featured on ESPN's Taste of the Town, the first barbecue restaurant on the SEC Network, CBS Sports, Headline News Tailgate Show, Amazon Prime's The Restaurant Comeback, Food Paradise, and named one of the top 100 barbecue restaurants in America. The search is over. Dead End Barbecue is located on 3621 Sutherland Avenue right here in Knoxville. You can even have it delivered right to your door through Chow Now. Visit their website at deadendbbq.com. Dead End Barbecue. The search is over. Good morning, Swain Event fam. America's college sports town has everything you could want in a lifestyle. You want a cottage home in town or a downtown condo? Or maybe you're looking for a home with a pool or a lake property. Well, whatever you want, the Knoxville area has it. And I'm ready to assist when it's time to find what you're looking for. So give me a call, Jennifer Morris, 865-694-5904, or email me at jennifermorris865 at gmail.com. And check out my website at nextmovesmokymountains.com. Go Vols! The conversation doesn't stop when the show is over. Follow the Swain event on Twitter and like this show on Facebook. I know some.
someone that is looking for a new 1500 Silverado shop at Betty Chevrolet and get 2.9% APR for 72 months on a new 1500 Silverado or just want a new vehicle in a show with Equinox LT fit your lifestyle check out Betty Chevrolet's lease option on a 2024 Equinox for only $325 a month as always buy with confidence with the Betty warranty for life Betty Chevrolet on Parkside Drive or online at BettyChevrolet.com. Betty Chevrolet, locally owned and operated for over 90 years. And if they need a driveway to park that nice truck, they can reach out to Jennifer Morris because she can help them find a new home. Jennifer may need to get in touch with Tyler Barron as well and help him find some new real estate. And we will discuss that in a moment. But first, I do want to encourage the good folks that if they have real estate needs, if they're looking for their first home, a new home, if, if they're looking to to add more space, if, if they're looking to, to downgrade and have less space to, to take care of, uh, please reach out to Jennifer Morris of Keller Williams Realty, uh, dot com. I talk about her and how she takes the stress of moving and finding homes away all the time. And, and I... I truly mean it with with every fiber in my being. She is the absolute best, and I encourage you to reach out. Before we transition to football, I do want to put a bow on basketball real quick uh, because there were some some guys that I wanted to mention uh, before we get to football, Swain, and and that was uh, that some other potential big men to keep an eye on. Uh, Rutgers center Clifford Omori. I hope I pronounced his last name correctly. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's a big name in the portal. Tennessee's been been reaching out to him. We'll see if they can make anything come of that. That he, he's a big time prospect, so that one may be tough. Uh, Duke's Christian Reeves and Oklahoma State's Eric Daly, a couple other names to to keep in the the memory bank. Uh, on the wing, Aaron Scott from North Texas, St. Thomas from Northern Colorado, where Dalton came from, uh, and then really the main one to to keep an eye on, in addition to Igor, the Charlotte transfer who's visiting later today is uh, Roddy Gale Jr., an Ohio State transfer guard. Uh, he is a priority for Tennessee, and Tennessee has had several uh, conversations with him. So some other names there to keep an eye on out in the portal. And although there was a lot of Jemai Meshack talk last week, uh, Jemai is not going anywhere. Jemai is very happy at Tennessee, and it would be very, very, very unexpected if uh, Jemai were to leave at this point. But yeah, Tyler Barron. He's apparently back in the portal, according to Brandon Marcello of uh, 24-7 Sports. Uh, Tyler Barron, who transferred from Tennessee after flirting with it for the past couple of uh, off-seasons, uh, finally pulled the trigger this off-season. Uh, committed to Ole Miss originally, decommitted from Ole Miss, committed to Louisville, enro- enrolled at Louisville, and is now back in the, the transfer portal as of this morning, according to Brandon Marcello of 24-7 Sports. I, I, I'm trying to find the words here. You know, it's different doing this with the mic in front of your face when you never talk to the players, when you never talk to the people that you're talking about. That's one thing I've learned about doing this and being in this business. There's a lot of folks that write, get behind a keyboard, get behind a microphone, but they don't show their face. They don't have dialogue with the people that they're talking about, good or bad. I've been able to talk to Tyler Barron here and there over the last couple of years, and he's always been respectful to me. I have heard of you know some of the negative things. You know, money's important, man. <clears throat> money's important. 
it's like oxygen you need it to 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 survive i mean on my when my feet hit the floor I, mean, I count my blessings i'm thankful for, that i woke up but yo my my mind is on money <laughs> it got to be when you got people to take care of right like it's important but man Fourth team coming up. And if any one of these teams between Ole Miss and, and Louisville pay money up front, you got bamboozled. And if I'm the next team, I'm not paying Tyler Barron up front. I'm not doing it. I Let hope this does this. Go ahead. Would you take Tyler Barron back at nope. Tennessee? Nope. I would not either. Nope. I would not. You don't need him. No. What about Key Lawrence? Apparently he's back in the portal as well after spending the semester with Ole Miss. I don't I don't know that situation as well as I know Tyler Barron's. And Tennessee's good at safety. Well, I won't I won't say good at safety, because I don't know that yet. But I won't say that yet, Ben. I retract what I said, but um, I don't. I don't know that situation. I'm looking for an interior lineman, maybe a running back, but interior lineman over over anything else. Wow, man! Wow, that is um, that is that is something that is the downside of the transfer portal. That's what people fear, that it will be exploited. And I don't know if Tyler Barron has something personal, or, and we never know. <clears throat> but the optics of this looks like what people feared with the transfer portal. It's one thing, hey, man, you're not playing, or, hey, I want to I wanna, I graduate, I want a fresh start, I want to go somewhere else. Okay, cool. Four teams, bro. In what six months? It's not a good look. Okay, text less box. than six months, like four months. Yeah, four, one team a month. Yeah, I know. Brian Hunsucker said, and he's he's one hundred percent right. SEC players cannot transfer to another SEC school right now. Yeah, I forgot about that. <clears throat> bad. So that's not happening. Clint says, so if a player enters the portal after getting NIL money, the player gets to keep the money, even though they're leaving after a few weeks. Uh, yeah, what, what are you going to do? You can't you can't put it in the contract that the NIL money is for play because then that would be pay for play. So, you know, if you if you are – a dealer of illegal products. If you have a stolen TV that you're trying to sell, but someone stole it from you before you were able to s- sell it, you ain't going to the police <laughs> saying, hey, I want to report theft. I stole this TV and somebody th- stole it from me. No, you can't say anything. So, like, there's programs that are skating around the rules of NIL of what the definition is using NIL to pay for play and this is the risk of doing that they could leave and you be screwed out of money like when Tennessee recruited Nico Nico could have went to another school would have been signed with Spire but he could have went to another school all right um, we're going to run through this text box and we got to wrap up. Nelson from Jackson, do y'all think we lose one of Webb, Leacock, Nimrod? Uh, yes, I do. Yes, I do as well. Uh, Nathaniel says, what if Barnes is planning on retiring after this year, a.k.a. after ZZ leaves and this portal pushes attempt to cash in on one big final run? 
Uh, Nathaniel, that's exactly what I am thinking, honestly. Which is why I was not emotionally distraught when the walker hit the portal, when a do hit the portal. Um, this is an opportunity to go all in. And what could be the final hurrah? I would kind of be surprised if Rick did coach past next season. I, I don't say that at all with any insight. Just looking at the roster, uh, Zakai, how much he adores Zakai, Zakai being the point guard. Uh, after this season, I mean, next offseason, the roster construction, oh, my goodness, it's it's basically going to be like a brand-new roster and, and a brand-new rebound, rebuild uh, the next iteration of uh, basketball, a, a new core. So I, I wonder if, if Rick will want to go through that again. Uh, Mississippi Vols says, didn't know Rakia and James Pierce were dating in 20-plus years. We will have some athletic balls coming in. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Pierce was right there with Rakia at – the WNBA draft. So, you know, congratulations to Rakia. Uh, I watched the WNBA draft, I think, to like the 10th pick. And I was like, uh, okay, I'm done. Because Tennessee didn't have any other players besides Rakia. I probably should have turned it off after Rakia, but I watched it because I thought it was really, really cool. But she's going to um, the Sparks. Real D from the 423 says, Swain going to compare Matthew's route to Ocho Cinco, but not steal a great slight Plaxico Burrs or Antonio Brown, LOL, JK. Um, no, I'm not. Yeah, he wears 89, like Antoine Randall L. Uh, thank you very much. Actually, or Antoine was 82. He, did, he, didn't, he didn't wear 89, he wore 82. I'm getting my numbers back, mixed uh, up. My bad. I thought you were still fan. Um... Chip Payne says, I'm a little disappointed in, in Elijah's uh, hair and leavings simply because for a selfish reason, meaning he's from my hometown and I want to see him make it at Tennessee, but I respect it. Well, uh, there's another hair that's from the hometown that's not going anywhere, and that's Caleb. So, something to, something, uh, to look forward to. Uh, Rodney Cummins says, Damn, who's Kendrick and who's Drake? Between who? We don't have rap beefs on, this, about us. on this show. We are on the same team. Swain's uh, Rick Ross and I'm Drizzy. No, I'm not. No, sir. I am not. And I am Jason Swain that likes to listen to rap beefs. I am enjoying myself. Uh, QC Rodney says, what are your thoughts on Inge and Darrell? Well, Darrell Sims with their first spring in under their belts. Um, so I met Darrell Sims for the first time during warm-ups. Um, and we got a chance to look, talk a little bit about you know, Eric Young was in my class. He was running back with Eric Young in high school from Union, South Carolina. Uh, he just talked about how happy and excited he was to, to be here and excited he is to – Rock that power T when he goes into different high schools. And then Inge, I didn't get a chance to meet him, but I did an in-game interview with Keenan Peely and asked him about Inge. And, man, he was smiling ear to ear uh, about Inge, and they have s some history from uh, recruiting uh, in the past. So uh, that was really the only thing I got on on, on Inge there. Uh, see what else we got here in the text box. Oh, that's pretty much it, man. Pretty much it so far on the text box. Let's see. Chip Hayne, would Nico be the best quarterback in the league this year? I don't know. That depends. I think he's most talented. But that that depends. That will depend on a lot of people around him. Swain and Viv fueled by Dan and Barbecue. Ben McKee, go balls two, four, seven. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are a homeowner and you've been putting off waiting for the right time to upgrade or replace your systems, this is the time because Hiller, plumbing, heating, cooling, and electrical 
They got you covered fifteen hundred dollars off. You can take advantage of this deal between now and the end of the month, April the thirtieth. Fifteen hundred dollars off new HVAC systems, whole home water filtration and descalers, or select new whole home generators. With all of your information and details on the special, go to the website. That is happyhiller.com. For Ben McKee, I'm Jason Swain. This one event fueled by Dead and Barbecue each and every time we come together here. Next time will be Thursday, 8 a.m. Ben McKee, hope you have a great rest of your day, my friend. Have fun reporting on a winning program. Winning all over the place. Thanks for the balloons. Celebrate. Peace out. Much love. Swain event fueled by Dead and Barbecue.